Hey everybody, welcome to the Thailand Achievers Blog Hop. Today, my name is Georgia Jagiers, otherwise known as Stampin' with Georgia, and I am going to show you a really fun technique. It's not unique to me. I've just taken a few ideas that I've seen online and on Pinterest and made it my own. And I'm calling it Faux Fall because we are going to take and do most of our work and technique with our woodland embossing folder. This is the completed card. And really, I love techniques, but I like ones that aren't messy. I don't like getting ink everywhere and I don't like a lot to clean up. So if you're anything like me, you're going to love it. So come on, let's get started. So here's a better look at the card. You can see that there's blue in the background for the sky. We've got our yellow birch leaves. And then of course, we've got the, the um, darkening in the grooves of the birch branches and stems, or trunks, excuse me. So I'm going to start. I told you that all the mess is contained in your woodland embossing folder. You're going to use the back side of the side of the folder that says Sizzix because that is the side that is indented. It's embossed. In, and so we're going to put our color all there. We're going to start out by using a little bit of pool party for our sky. And I used a foam roller. These are wonderful, easy to use, and you get plenty of color. And because I'm not exactly sure where my paper is going to land, I'm going to go all the way across my folder. And by not pushing too hard, I won't get down in the grooves and end up with blue stems or trunks to my trees. I don't want that because birch has really pretty white. And it's okay if you go up a little bit in the area where you're going to stamp leaves because the... Um, the delightful Dijon color that we're going to use for the leaves will actually cover that over. So I'm using the tree canopy that comes from the stamp set sheltering tree. Some of you maybe already have that at home. It was a very popular one that came out last spring. I use it all the time because I can change the season for what I need. And so I'm going to ink that very large stamp up and I am going to stamp directly on to the folder, just down a little bit, a little bit. I'm stamping on a pretty firm table, and I'm going to stamp the second one just a little bit lower because I don't want my leaves to look like they're in a row. And I'm gonna, again, I'm going to go all the way across. And if you end up stamping and you miss a spot, it's really no big deal. It's leaves. You can go back in and add a little bit more color if you want to. Also, you can use your stamping mat underneath that if you want to, and that will help you get a better impression. And then last but not least, I want to add a little bit of the dark color to the um, birch bark, just to the cracks of it. So I'm using just the edge of a sponge dauber. I'm going ever so lightly and if you get a little on and you want to go all the way up into the leaves too because otherwise those will just be white and they'll really stand out and if you get a little bit of brown on the tree trunk that goes down in the grooves it's okay because birch is very varied in its color on the trunk but I'm using a really light touch that's the key or you'll end up with more than you want on your trunks and I think I've gone far enough now across my trunk and then I'm going to lay my white paper down and the size of my white cardstock is four inches by five and a quarter and I'm going to then put that in my big shot If at all possible, when you're using your Big Shot, if you will put it in hinge first, you will save your save on your embossing folders on that hinge wearing out because they are just plastic. And especially on these larger ones, it tends to, um, they get a little 
bit worn a little bit e more easily because they barely fit. So now as I pull that off, you see all the messes in there. And look at the lovely nature that I just created. We see our yellow birch leaves. We've got the texture in our birch tree. And we've got our sky. And really all I need to do with my embossing folder, I can clean it up with a baby wipe or I can just run it under the faucet and dry it with paper towel. Super easy. And I've made multiples of these. Just kind of continue using your colors in the same areas. And um, you can finish up, make more than one card at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that to a mat that I've already cut of early espresso and my early and that's what color I used on my birch so that'll coordinate and that's just an eighth of an inch larger let's do my burnishing on the back side and then we're going to go ahead and put that on my delightful Dijon card that is your standard five and a half by eight and a half folded in half oh and the uh, measurement of the early espresso is um, four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So you've just got your eighth inch difference going around creating that small little difference. And then for, and I love it because it kind of comes out as a wallet watercolor look. And then I, I took um, an inch by a four and a half inch strip of the delightful Dijon. I stamped my message and my messages, I am really loving this feather together. I really bought it for the feathers. But I'm using these greetings all the time because of the script. And you've got a nice variety of thank you, a thinking of you, a happy birthday, and then a few other little extra messages. I just love that. And I stamped it over to the far right because I'm going to punch with my banner triple punch. And I know a half, whole half inch is going to come off, so I always make my strips a half inch larger than what I want them to end up. As you can see, I both use both sides of my paper most times. And then I just want to add just a little glimmer to this card. Not too much. So it's always easiest to put your glimmer on your larger piece, or your, your not your glimmer, your adhesive on your larger piece, and then lay your larger piece over that. Scissors. To just snip that off and we're going to add that to the card with dimensionals and I'm just getting over chemo fingers you can notice I've got very short fingers so the ones that I have left I kind of press in and then the corner pops up for me so I can get a hold of it because I don't have any fingernails to use right now but that, this too shall pass. And if you haven't followed my cancer story, that's a category on the side of my blog if you want to know more because I freely share what's been going on because everybody knows somebody. So there you have it. And it's a great masculine card, but it's a great card for anybody for fall. I hope you love this technique as much as I do and we'll give it a try. Thanks so much for stopping by today.